Welcome back to Black and White, and we're talking right now with uh, Dutch Masters. And when I first read his his piece, I said, "Gee, I used to smoke those." And I'm I'm wondering, is that a real name, or is it is it? Uh, and what what does his mother have against him to call him Dutch Masters? But anyway, Dutch, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. What's the what is the origin of Dutch Masters? Uh, it's actually a really funny story. Uh, as we all uh, on the Wall Street uh, did when we were young men, we we cold called people. I don't even Absolutely. know. If that, I don't. I don't even know if that's legal anymore. Dan, <laughs> but um, we would pick up the phone just like in the movie Wall Street and uh, call a rich guy and ask him to go for an account with us. So um, I was leaving my real name, and nobody cared because it's kind of boring. And the guy I was sitting next to had a really, really cool name and he was leaving messages and everyone was calling him back. And after about two weeks of him listening to me, he said, you know, you're Dutch, aren't you? And I said, yeah. And he says, well, that's your nickname. He goes, why don't you just call him and say Dutch called, leave your number and hang up. Watch, they'll call back. And sure enough, it worked. <laughs> Good. You know, uh, I tell people um, when I started in the brokerage business in the early 1970s um we had rotary phones right and uh i i tell these young used to tell these young brokers in the training programs you have no idea how sore your finger can get trying to do 50 cold calls a day on a rotary telephone so but um things have changed dramatically one of the things that uh, that's affecting the markets and and we don't have a full understanding of where it's going right now is inflation. And I, I write a lot of commentary and I'm working on a commentary right now of, um, the number of the number of things that Joe Biden has done to destroy America. And, and if you look at all the 30 some executive orders he put on the first day of his presidency, one analysis you could look at is say, wow, he didn't have anybody approved. He had no way to execute the order other than to say it verbally or put it in writing. But his idea of alternative to gas and oil being wind and solar, even today, solar is only about 2% of the electricity generated in the country and wind is about 8%. But the, the psychological impact of when he was elected, the price of crude oil at that point in time to just before it uh, sold off, it had moved 127%. Price of gasoline at the pump on a national basis only moved about 57%. Now, for my listeners, please don't understand, I'm not trying to make light of the fact it was only 57%. Because what I'm saying to people uh, there's a lag in the price of gasoline relative to the price of crude oil. And so the, the pump of gas, the gasoline at the pump is the most obvious impact of inflation, but it's all, it's all over the economy. It's everywhere. Uh, we are right now at 6.2%. Uh, scary enough in the Carter administration about this same time during the year is when inflation first crossed 6%. And we have an administration who told us first it was transitory, it's going to last very long. Then they said it was going to be probably, well, end of 21, maybe 22. Now they're saying possibly into 23. What do you think? Well, I think that what they've really admitted is that the word transitory is completely off the table. And uh, they've really admitted by virtue of omission, they started, Powell omitted the word and actually said, that, you know, we're going to have to get rid of this word transitory. And what they're saying is uh, that was a lie. Uh, it was a positioning statement um, so that they could maybe try to figure things out. and. Uh, one of the writers that I listen to or read a lot uh, came out this morning or late last night with a piece that said that um, what's happened with 
uh, inflation and the Fed uh, is that the Fed's come out and said, we have to accelerate probably interest rate rises and uh, tapering. And the truth is, inflation's out of control. Now, the Fed, Fed didn't say inflation's out of control, but, but when you, they're, they're admitting they don't have a handle on it. And this is what the market might have been suspecting. And uh, now, <clears throat> you know, the mainstream media wants to say that all of the market moves that we're seeing the last couple of days, which have been pretty uh, volatile uh, right. and, and big moves to the downside in a lot of positions that you wouldn't expect. Uh, very high quality stocks getting just smashed today. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this is a result of uh, they, the mainstream media wants to talk about it being Omicron. Well, Omicron is nothing. Uh, the market's smart enough to shrug it off and say, this thing is, that's just garbage. It's just uh, talk. This is about inflation. This is a, th this, these market moves, this is about inflation and the market participants knowing that the Fed does not have control over it. And when you said, you know, you don't want to minimize, you know, what 57% is, you know, I live in a pretty affluent community and um, the construction around here is pretty rampant. A lot of people doing home improvements and new homes being built. Um, and I see these guys come every day and uh, they're driving their big, you know, F-250s or 350 trucks because that's what they've got to have in order to do their job and carry their tools. But they don't live here. They've got to drive some of these guys an hour to get here from where they live. And you start thinking about the cost of filling that thing up um, has gone from, you know, 60 bucks to 160 bucks or 125 bucks, um, you know, and doing that multiple times a week. I mean, this is how inflation trickles into the economy. That guy now has to charge more to right. my buddy down the street who's getting an addition put on his house or a pool put in his backyard. And so he starts to pay more and just so this guy can afford to come to work every day. Well, you know, um, um, in, in my career on Wall Street and even today as a, as a private investor managing a small group of people, uh, one of the things that I've done uh, through my entire 50 plus years of experiences is I uh, follow interest rates and fixed income are an important part of my client's portfolio. And there, there's a there's a um, a belief on Wall Street and and major economists that when you buy a 90 day Treasury bill, you are expecting to get a zero inflation adjusted return. That on a historical basis and it's charted forever, as long as there've been 90 day bills, um, in a, in a normal time sequence you would get a zero real rate of return. We have the yield on the 90-day treasury at four to five basis points, and we have inflation at 6.2 so far. And so one would have to say that if the Fed is going to live up to its original mandate, that is employment and inflation, they've got to move rates approximately 622 basis points. Man, that's huge. And 622 basis points just to get to a zero rate of return. Uh, the Fed is not going to be able to do to get control of inflation with quarter point moves two or three times a year. They're going to have to do bigger moves and more of them and 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 press the accelerator on raising interest rates, because if they don't, it's gonna look like Jimmy Carter with hyperinflation. So I don't know whether they are committed to do that, whether Powell's committed to do that, but I, I, I have grave concerns, not only about the treasury, but in general, whether the administration, senior people, have enough experience in the areas that they are working in to do anything substance uh, to, to, to turn the economy. When we have, when the president announced he was going to do a 50 million barrel 
released from the Strategic Reserve. When the Secretary of Energy was asked, so how big is the reserve? She had no idea. This is the person who's in charge of managing energy resources in the United States, and she didn't know what the amount of strategic reserves. The, the other part of the issue on the strategic reserves, the 50 million barrels, Joe Biden stood at the platform and told us that the release of the strategic reserves, which is roughly about two and a half to three days of consumption of crude oil in the United States, was going to bring prices at the pump down. Well, in fact, they didn't come down, and he didn't release the reserves to American oil companies to refine. He sold it to the Chinese, the South Koreans, and the Japanese. So we never got any of it. Now, a week ago, before the day before Thanksgiving, the markets closed fairly positive. The day after Black Friday, we saw that the Dow off 1,100 points. We saw um, crude oil down $10 a barrel, and we saw uh, gold down $100 an ounce. On Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, the national average for crude oil, excuse me, for gasoline at the pump was $3.27 a gallon. After the market closed on Friday, after a huge decline and a big decline in oil, the price of crude oil was off two cents, or the price of gasoline was off two cents. So I agree with you. We're, I think we're just beginning to see significant volatility. Where do you think it's going? Well, I haven't agree with you about, um, you know, the people we have in charge and, and my confidence level there. I mean, there were certain times that you and I have lived through on Wall Street together that um, we had some pretty major problems and uh, we had some pretty powerful, knowledgeable guys, Paulson and Bernanke, for example, who really knew their stuff mm -hmm. and were really smart. And they were able to do what was necessary to right the ship and not have everything just completely on fire. And, um, and, and today, you know, Janet Yellen runs around the world talking about uh, how the biggest threat we have is climate change. And meanwhile, you know, I live in a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice suburb here. And, uh, you know, I'm getting accosted in the parking lot by aggressive homeless guys, you know, who demand money from me. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to worry about climate change. <laughs> what about this guy? <laughs> right. Maybe I should worry about him. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, um, we so, yeah, we where's it going? Yeah. yeah. Where, Where's it going? I'll tell you where I think it's going. I think I think uh, and I've we've been writing our commentary every night uh, for the last two years. And uh, a few months ago, we said that we disagree with the word transitory. We think that's garbage. Uh, number one. Number two, everything's going to cost more. Uh, forever. And get used to it. And then another op ed that we wrote, the guy is if donor a skilled person. And whatever <clears throat> for your time you need to raise your rates because if you don't you're going to get behind the curve because everything is going up um as we discussed the getting to work uh the products that you have to buy to put on your shelf if you're a retailer the cost of the labor at a restaurant if you're a restaurant owner um the cost of the beef that's going on to the the plate that you're serving but uh i we we, we really think that there's a, a major issue here. And the issue is that you've got a labor force that doesn't want to go to work. The numbers proved that out this morning. They were expecting 500 plus thousand uh, new job creations. They got 200,000 and something. And that is a huge mess. But what does it show you? It shows you that this stagflation that we had with Carter, where you had lots of inflation and you had no growth, it's happening. And they want to poo-poo it and say it's not going to happen. We got control of it, but we're watching it happen. All right. We need to take a commercial break, and we'll be right back in, in just a minute with uh, Dutch Masters. We'll be right back. 
The vaccine companies tell us their products will be 95% effective. How do you know if you're in the 95 or the 5% group? Congressman Steve Lynch, who had the two-shot regimen of a vaccine, just tested positive. You may not know which group you're in, but in either case, you need to have the strongest immune system possible. You need to get CV Acute for short-term protection and CV Defense for long-term support for a healthy immune system. Take charge of your health care. Go to empoweryourself.info to order these important supplements. Welcome back. We're talking to Dutch Masters, and yes, that's his moniker, and uh, we're talking about inflation. And um, we were going to talk about something else, but I think this, in, this inflation the conversation is really good, and I'd like to continue it, um, if that's all right with you, sir. Oh, you bet. Sure. So we're seeing ga gasoline prices um, up uh, dramatically, crude oil prices up dramatically. Uh, we've probably re recovered almost half of the decline. Um, one thing that I wrote recently was, um, um, I think that there are a lot of people, if you think about it, we have to go back, this 6.2% number, we have to go back to Jimmy Carter to find that level. So we have possibly two generations of people that have never experienced inflation, significant inflation, and a, the rest of us. That's a great point. That's a great point. That's right. Oh, well, well, you can use that. I'll give that to you. Thank and you. Uh, But we also have many generations that have did experience inflation, but in many cases have forgotten what it really means. I wrote a piece on trying to help people understand that when you get a CPI number, it is not a current or forward-looking number. It's a look back of what happened over a period of time. And so at 6.2% is the trailing inflation rate based on what's going on. And if we have had a 57% increase in crude oil or gasoline prices, but crude oil is up 127%, it tells me that there's more inflation coming in the pipeline with energy, both oil and natural gas. In addition to that, uh, we, in a matter of months, went from being a net exporting nation to a net importing nation again. And it, sho it's, it shows to me the ineptitude of the Biden team who made such earth-shaking decisions on the first day in office that they were going to shut down the Keystone Pipeline. They're now talking about cut the, shutting a pipeline down, and I think in Michigan or Minnesota, that they don't have the resources of solar or wind to begin to release the shutdown. And so we had Biden's team going to the Middle East, to the prince in Saudi Arabia, ask him if he would increase oil production so we could we could stabilize our our general need for oil and the saudi prince said no nah, i don't think so we'll we'll think about it and talk about it let you know later so we're now an, a net importing of crude oil and what we we think about as consumers we think about crude oil as gasoline and natural gas is basically how we heat our homes. What we don't understand is that, for example, in natural gas, natural gas is used in making thousands of different products other than just heating our homes. And the influence of increases in prices of natural gas will permeate into thousands and thousands of products. Do you have a, are you telling your clients any forecast of where you think inflation might go? Well, what we said was we thought that oil was going to go over 100. <clears throat> uh, we still believe that uh, a barrel. And we felt that, you know, the policies that you're talking about are almost ensuring that we'll be right. Um, and frankly, we don't understand it. But then there's a lot you can't understand about some of the policies that are being put down. Um, you know, so, yeah, we're, we're basically saying... I think 
one of the things I like to tell is a little story about what rich people do to protect themselves from inflation and then talk about what the average guy does. And, you know, what, what do rich people do? Okay, what am I watching our very wealthy clients and people who, who uh, work with us, uh, what do they do? They buy Picassos, they buy Ferraris, and they buy $5 million, $10 million houses in Newport Beach, and they don't even move in. Okay, they don't even put furniture in there. They just make sure that somebody comes by a couple times a month and make sure it's clean and that the, uh, the lawn's cut. They do this because those are items that they can buy uh, that are going to protect them if there is a lot of inflation. And they're, that there's a reason why the price of Picassos and Ferraris and houses like that are skyrocketing. It's because people are doing just that wealthy people so <clears throat> what can the average person do you know it turns out that one of the one of the simplest ways uh to protect yourself from inflation if you're a business owner is if you're a business owner and you're selling a product let's say you're selling a cell phone like apple computer um you can raise your price for that phone you can instead of charging 650 dollars for the phone you can charge 1150 dollars for the phone and People are going to buy it and you're going to you know, protect yourself from the increased costs that you have of building that phone and the increased costs of everything around you. So by owning a share of stock in an Apple computer, you actually can protect yourself from inflation. And what I love is that now with commission-free trading and fractional share ownership and things like that, you can the average person can open an account at multiple firms and not pay a commission and own a piece of great businesses. The price you pay for that is volatility. So the, it's going to go up and down in value. Um, but if you're holding it for a longer period of time, the volatility smooths out. And if you don't concern yourself with the day-to-day -day moves, you are owning a business and that business uh, is protecting you from inflation. The other thing, of course, people always think about is gold. But what's happened is some of these cryptocurrencies have actually replaced gold as a better hedge against uh, inflation than gold. Now, I happen to be a fan of gold. I happen to own gold myself, but don't tell the IRS. Um, but, you know, the reality is that, um, um, you know, I, I see that as as a decent place to park it where it's not going to lose me money. Um, and that's really the way I look at it. Now, you know, we think that gold could go to 2,400, 2,500 here when there's a, a little bit more of a shock to the system and people start to realize what's really happening with inflation. But, you know, people, uh, the, the beautiful thing about inflation for the, uh, for the politicians and the members of the Fed is that they can print money and the average person really doesn't understand the damage that that's doing. Mm. And so I try to make it, I try to bring it home and let them know what that damage is. I tell them, let's say you put $100,000 in a safe at your house in cash. And four years ago, I, you know, if I had $100,000 in the safe. Uh, I went out and I bought a Ford F-150 for $30,000. 2018, it's sitting right out there in my driveway. Um, for me to go buy that exact same truck today uh, as a 2022 model, I think it's probably going to cost me about sixty thousand. So fifty or sixty thousand buys me, so that's doubled, okay, in four years. That's inflation. Now that hundred thousand that I sat there in the uh, in the safe four years ago could could have bought me three Ford F-150s, and then I'd have ten thousand left to take everybody out to dinner. But today, I can buy one F-150, and what do you think that F-150 is going to cost 10 years from now? It's probably going to cost more than 100000 so more than the cash that I have. And that's the insidious nature of inflation, and that's why you have to find a way to protect yourself from it and grow that 100000 in a way that allows you to keep up. And wealthy people do it in their own way. And the average guy doesn't necessarily have the ability to buy all the same things that he would buy and, and, and whatnot. But, you know, owning your own business, buying a piece of a great business uh, can, can help you with that. And, you know, purchasing, um, 
you know, uh, gold or crypto is, is really the only way the average guy can do it. But at least today, you can do it in a way that doesn't charge you commission. Right, cost effective. If you look at stocks, um, uh, I agree with you. I, I tend to buy stocks. Uh, and one of my investment profiling selection process is I look for companies whose current dividend is greater than the yield on the 30-year bond. Yeah. So if you get cash flow while you're waiting for the underlying principal to appreciate, it reduces the volatility and increases the possibility of success. Absolutely. No doubt about it. And we're seeing a real shift right now, literally today and yesterday and in the last couple, week, couple of weeks. The high-flying tech stocks um, are literally being sold off hard. Mm -hmm. And there is a... Uh, a move and a shift going to the very stocks you're talking about right now. I think 2022 is going to look a lot different than 2021 and 2020. So what's your outlook for the market in 2022? You know, we haven't actually put that out yet. Um, we had a really big bullish uh, market call for 2021 and we were mostly right. It didn't quite get to where we thought it would. We thought the NASDAQ would get to 17,000 came close we got within a within shouting distance or a nine iron shot of it uh and then it's peeled back we thought the dow might go to forty thousand this year and uh it it uh only got to about thirty six thousand. so so we came we, we went pretty far and got pretty far with it but for 2022 we are going to have to factor in uh, a couple of things. We're going to have to factor in the fact that we don't think there's very smart people running things economically in our country and that they may make some really stupid decisions, maybe more of them. Mm. And we're going to have to factor in this inflation uh, issue. And so I don't think we're going to be quite as bullish for 2022, to be okay. honest with you. Dutch, uh, we're uh, almost out of time. So can you please tell our audience where they can get information about you and your firm and, and how they could maybe invest with you. Well, yeah, so we don't open accounts for anybody. We let you open your account wherever you want to. We just provide you with a very uh, uh, transparent look at exactly what we're trading and when we're trading it. We are at carnivoretrading.com. And the fun part about it right now is we are doing our 12 stocks of Christmas for 12 days of Christmas, uh, and it's a 14-day free trial. So we've already picked two. Our third one will be up to, uh, tonight. And so you can get all 14 stocks basically for free if you go and sign up and, and become a, a, a carnivore, a part of the carnivore family. So carnivoretrading.com, and we'd love to show you what we're doing. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. We'll have you back. And we'll be right back after these messages. If you are interested in reaching our vast black and white network audience with your products or services, then contact Hollis Media Group at 1-855-673-8635. That's 1-855-673-8635 for more information on this great opportunity. Hi, this is Dan Perkins, and thanks for listening. Please join us next week on Blacks and Whites, and if you missed any of this show, go to blackandwhite.us website and you can download this and other shows. Thanks for listening.